there, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of all of us Belizeans here, I want to take this opportunity to say welcome you to a new program here called Belizean Beauty Queens Past and Present. I'm your host, Alan McCoy, and on this program, I'll be interviewing some of the past and present delegates from different beauty pageants that they have participated in. Pageants like Queen of the Bay Pageant, Mrs. Moore Pageant, Queen of the West Pageant, Senorita Feria de la Fleur Pageant, or any other pageant that you have participated in. But the objective of this program is to ensure that all the delegates past and present share their experiences home and abroad on what it feels like in being a delegate and to give and to ask them the challenges they're facing prior to and during the pageant. On this program, um, you're going to meet some of the delegates that I'll be interviewing and where they're going to share their story and their experience on how they handle this. We're going to meet some of the delegates in a moment. But first things first, we're going to get into some messages and announcements. We'll be right back with Belize and Beauty Queens past and present. And then we're going to get in, and then we're going to have the interview with the delegates. We'll be back after these words. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Belizean Beauty Queens Past and Present. I'm Alan McCoy, live from um, Belize today, and I have been guesting. I have guests that will be done virtually that will be talking about their experience of Queen of the Bay 2017-2018. And today, my guest with me is Alia Isgiri, 2017-2018 Queen of the Bay. Alia, how are you doing? Well, it is my definitely pleasure, Leah, as you're the first guest that will be interviewed on this program. So tell me about yourself. Um, what kind of work or profession are you doing at the moment? Ah, very nice. Tropical Amber. I re um, what was that about? So it's a beachwear store. You can find swimsuits, uh, dresses, any type of beach necessities, accessories, things. And my store is basically just a collection of things that I love and I, I really like. That's... That's really sweet, and that's for the ladies to enjoy only. Not that's just wardrobes, especially for women. No guys allowed. Oh, I also offer feature for men too. Ah. It's more specifically for women. That is nice to hear. Maybe one day soon when I get to your store. Um, where is that located? In Culture Capital, Angriga. You can access it everywhere. Okay then. That's <laughs> nice. In that's nice. Um. So, Alia, um, how does it feel for you to be a Queen of the Bay designate on the day of September 10, 2017? It felt a lot of emotions because of, you know, what all was happening, all the events surrounding up to that day and the events that took place on that day. <laughs> I could say that was historical, but I felt... Uh, 
happy, anxious, nervous, a lot of emotions. And at the end of the day, I could say that I was really, really touched by the outpour of love and support from the community, especially my hometown, Dangriga. When I got home, they put together a parade for me, and it was just a lot of love that I received, despite from the little negative comments and, you know, back and forth. The amount of love and support that I received was truly heartwarming. That's nice for you. And how did you prepare yourself for the pageant? Did you feel any nervous on stage when you go and represent your hometown? Well, I was preparing from the summer, I believe I started preparing. Well, from the year before, I told Michelle Makwiki because we had, we were helping they had a Queen of the Day Sanskrit pageant the year before when Miss Chrisella Castillo won. And so, from I attended that pageant and I told Miss Sharima, which one I've known since I was a child, that I wanted to partake. And so, the other year came around and she gave me a call during the summer and asked me if I still wanted to. And I said, oh, yes. And from then, we started preparing. I was attending SJC at the time, and so after classes I would leave and go to the house and we would practice and, you know, start preparing. And then up to fast forward to the night before the pageant, the day before the pageant, I was super nervous. I was so anxious and nervous. But the day of the pageant, all of that went away. So it's like I had a pre-episode of my nervousness. <laughs> I was completely calm on the night of the pageant, completely contented, confident, relaxed. Yeah. Well, that's good to hear. Now, um, what was your reaction on the day of that pageant? On the day of September 10, 2017, when they removed the Nina Moya on stage, when she interrupted the stage by calling Ms. Esmeralda and made her look bad. Would you like to give an account of what transpired on what happened that day? Okay, so on that day, because of all what was happening, I was already, already kind of prepared for something to happen. I didn't know what exactly what would have happened, but I was already mentally prepared and so as you if you would watch the back the clips and the interviews on the news five a lot and you would see that i wasn't really surprised i was already mentally prepared but um when i walked up to be crowned by miss chris chris i didn't see the Naira Moya or Miss Arun Dwarf behind me. I didn't see what they were doing at all. It wasn't until I heard the Shari Williams call for her to be escorted off the stage. Then I knew that she was behind me and she was doing something. But it was until I saw the news, then I saw what she was doing. So I, I didn't really see. Yep, and I know people are posting up on social media saying they want um, Zenaya Moya removed from the um, Queen of the Bay Commission and then after that uh, Miss Emma Boyton sent a letter to her telling her that her services are no longer accepted so they had to terminate her with immediate effect on that day and all the past people that have been there and and up to this day, Queen of the Bay is run by an association of all the past queens who held the title up. Yes, that's correct. And I noticed when we first met face to face. And yeah. Girls that, and so I, girl, young, yeah, I always encourage young ladies from my community to partake in Queen of the Bay. Despite what had happened, they, it, it, right? you, you learn from them. Uh, yeah, always in 
parents may help me when to in the past, you know, you always learn from them. You have to you have to grow from them and clean up the bay with all the past that's good that's nice um i noticed when we first met me face to face when we were at miss universe but he's pageant 2018 which was held at the bitmore plaza how do you feel when you and i met this was before um Janelle frazier became successful in being miss universe but he's right after rebecca rath passed on the crown to her how do you feel about that Remember, well, you know when you um you have this friend on, and you finally meet them in person. I've been receiving your love and support months prior on social media, and finally meeting you was really exciting. To finally yes. meet Mr. Allen. Yes, after the after the months after I got your crown, because after that um. I met up with Jenny Lee Cruz, who I'm a queen of the Bay 2018 that time there, because the first time when Jenny Lee and I we met, we met at um, Love FM studio when she made do something for 12 days of Christmas. But I personally was on um, was going was going to do um, Christmas performance for um, this Spanish station, which is Love FM sister station, um, Estera Moore, which was good. Yeah, she she's an artist. She's a singer. She has an Yes. They run a band with her with her dad, brother Femme Cruz, who is a Love FM correspondent. And you hear her every morning on Plus TV. Before Louis Sweet take over before Louis Sweet takes over the program. And may I ask you, how did you feel to be on that night at um, Miss Universe? How did you feel to be Well, Alia, I feel happy about that. I really love because you know me, I I'm a pageant lover. I've been doing this for quite some time because every time I go perform all over the place I do it I use I usually do it physically. But this time I had to do it virtually because of the fact that nobody can't do anything because of this crazy pandemic. And another question I'm gonna ask you um, what advice would you like to give to the aspiring ladies if they want to become Queen of the Beer? To be prepared for you know be prepared and That's a good idea there. I really but I really, really like your admiration that you did representing um, your culture capital very well, Alia. And I really admire your work you've done. So I just wanna say thanks for coming on the program. Um I gladly appreciate everything you've done. But maybe one day soon we'll do something physically when this pandemic is over. Cause I want to work on a new segment within the near future called Ceviche with the Past Delegates, which will be good. That sounds fun because I love ceviche and I know how to make it too, so we can definitely work on that. Yeah, but we can work on that when the, de when, the, uh, when the pandemic is over and I encourage the public and I will encourage all the delegates to come to the studio physically whenever we have a um, program like this to occur. Aliyah, it was a pleasure being interviewed with you. I just want to thank you for coming by and we'll look forward to this again someday soon in the future. Well, Mr. Alan, thank you for having me and should you ever 
you know, want to do something else, like you just mentioned, I'm always here for you to reach out to me. Thank you. Anytime, Alia. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. You too. Bye. Goodbye. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. There you have it. Alia Izagiri, Queen of the Bay, designated 2017 2018. Reaches out to me via Facebook Messenger. Coming up after the commercial break, we're going to have a second guest in the studio. That will be, the, that will be a virtual interview. The ladies and beauty queens, man, past and present with Alan Nareen McCoy here. We'll be right back after these messages and a word from our sponsors. Beauty Queens past and present. My name is Alan McCoy coming to you live from the studio of the Reed McCoy Entertainment right here in the heart of Belize City. In our last segment we interviewed Alia Izagiri who was Queen of the Bay 2017-2018 and it was a good interview that we had on our first segment. And now today on our second segment we have a, we have a beautiful guest here via Facebook Messenger phone call who's gonna tell us her story and she's all the way from Garden City, Belmopan. Ladies and gentlemen, she was Miss Las Flores before, from 2019 to 2020, and 2020 to 20, 2020 to 2021, Queen of the Bay. And I have her online with me, ladies and gentlemen. Here she is, Myra Sibian. How are you doing? Hi, good night. Good night, Mr. Alan, and good night, everyone. Um, I'm doing fine, I'm excited. Tell me about yourself, Myra. What kind of profession or work are you doing at the moment? Well, as you said, my name is Myra Cedrian. I am Miss La Forest 2019-2021. I am Queen of the Bay, Belmopan 2020-2021 and National Queen of the Bay 2020-2021. Besides being the queen, I also am Work. I, I work full time as a finance administrator at the Belmopan Fine Furnishings Limited Company, and I also study part time at the University of Belize. I'm currently pursuing an associate degree in business science. Wow, that is so nice. But I don't want to, I don't want to come in at the furniture shop because because you know I really love I really love furniture and them are my thing. Where I really enjoy most of those um, tables, those desk chairs. You also do bedside table, right? Yes, we do everything when it comes to furniture, wooden and also upholstered furniture. Well, that's nice to hear that. So, from the time you were being chosen by the Belmont Queen of the Bay Committee, what was your reaction to the day when you become Belmont Queen of the Bay? How do you feel about that? Very good. Um, it's actually very exciting to have been able to not just participate in a pageant last year, but also be chosen to represent the Garden City. It's a huge honor, and I am very happy that um, I was able to, to win. That's nice to hear. I really love Garden City. I really love Garden City because that's not my favorite place because the last time I come for a farm day, physically, was last year, September, when I became a Mr. Sports pageant up to now. Still can't do my physical performance again because I ended up to perform for two locations, Billy City and Kikaka. At the time when you were Miss Las Flores 2019, could you tell us your experience of what it feels like to be the next Miss Las Flores? This was right after you were Paris passed the crown on to you at the time when, Ms. when you were Paris was Miss Las Flores in 2017 when she passed the crown on to you. Um, being being Miss Las Flores was basically this part of pageantry for me. It was the first pageant that I ever went up for, and I was super happy. I was extremely happy to have been able to win the pageant, and it, it's a huge. It was a huge honor from them to be able to represent my community in of Las Flores as the queen, as their queen, and um, that opened a lot of doors for me. And one of the doors that opened was being have been chosen to represent the Garden City 
in the national pageant. So if being Miss Naslores, I I will forever treasure that uh, that title. And it, it's very it's it's an amazing experience. I've had an amazing experience, and I have been able to to work with them, a lot of people, and and do a lot of activities because before even before and after um, COVID started. Uh, yeah, because I remember the time that COVID did mess up all of us here, and we can't we could barely move, we could barely do anything we want, but. Everything had to go virtual, so I'll ask you how do you feel when you see a musician like myself, Alondi Rima Poy, that came to the pageant and provided musical performances for the crowd and also to you. What was your reaction when you saw me serenaded for you and the rest of the delegates? It's amazing to have such talented people here in our country and I feel like um, we don't appreciate it that much. And we really do need to start to support our locals, our local artists, um, a lot more than what we do up to now. Exactly, because you understand the fact that most some Belizean artists don't get enough support, you know. Yeah, they don't get enough support and enough recognition for their talent. That's right, and that's really sad. Now, in terms of Queen of the Bay, I know it is sad that no audience was on the program when they do the um, virtual pageant. Could you tell us what it was like to have the, the pageant gone virtual rather than having it go physical? Well, performing without an audience, uh, it's still nerve wracking. Um, you still feel nervous, you still get the, the stage nerves. And I think that um, when it comes to having the people support that helps a lot. In, in my personal experience and my personal opinion, having an audience share at you helps you and encourages you to perform even better. So I did miss having an audience and um, the nervous, when it comes to nervousness, you still feel nervous because you, you have the, um, the judges right in front of you. We still have the camera people and we had in mind that a lot of people at home were watching us. So it's still nerve wracking be out there and, and to go on stage and, and perform. But the overall experience of the virtual pageant was still good, it was still exciting and it was still you still feel the amazing feeling and the huge honor to be there. That's right, because you know virtual pageant, everything everybody have to sit on a TV set, even on a tablet or the phone to check out that um seventy fifth Queen of the Bay pageant because I remember some years back everything used to be physical than before. Yes, everything was, mm -hmm, yeah. And um, what advice would you like to give to the aspiring delegates on who wants to become Miss Las Flores as well as Queen of the Bay? I want to encourage them to, to go ahead and, and try it. I mean, whoever has the feeling and, and feels that they have the capacity to be able to put in the hard work on them and get the, the proper training, I think anybody can do it. Um, when it. Once you put in hard work to it and you keep humble throughout your journey, you, you, can, achieve, you can achieve greatness. That is and you don't always, I mean, there's, there's, there can only be one winner, but at the, in the end of any, of any pageant, you still, you don't lose, you still gain the experience, you still meet a lot of people, you gain new friends and them. Um, it helps you a lot. It helps you. It, it helps you build your personality. So in the end, even if you don't get first place, you still end up winning. Uh, I can see that because you know that my usual thing. You know, I love beauty pageants, and I always attend that. Is there any final words you want to say? Who you want to send a shout out to in terms of this program? I just. I would like to say. Thank you to all my supporters in general, to my family, to everyone who took their time to congratulate me. Up to today, I still get messages saying congratulations, and I appreciate that very, very much. Uh, and a heartfelt thank you to all my supporters online. There's a lot of people who I, whom I don't even know in person, and, and they have been supporting me from day one on social media. And I appreciate that very much. It is very encouraging. and I. I would like to ask you guys to keep on doing that because um, not just with me, but with, with anybody else who is up on, on any challenge in life. 
it's very good to have people's feedback and like a good feedback and, and to get good support because that helps you and it encourage you, encourages you to continue doing your best and it goes a really long way. And I'd also like to thank my family for being so supportive and for always being there for me. I also would like to thank um, the Las Flores Committee for having put up the pageant last year and opened these doors for me. Also the Belmopan Committee and the National Committee as well. Indeed, that's true. That. Now I've got one more question I want to ask you, right? Um, how do you feel when, um, when I did share that video with, of me doing a, a virtual performance of doing the song entitled Queen of the Bay because it's a, it's a type of music I am trying to do, I'm working on, it's called acoustic. it's a mixture of jazz and acoustic, which means that um, it's just the saxophone that I'm playing and then I take the keyboard and I just do the um, background music with that. How do you feel about that performance that I did? The performance was, I, I watched it and it was, it was amazing. I, I want to thank you um, publicly for having done the song, especially for me. It, um, I'm honored for you to to have done that and um, I admire, I do admire your talent. Thank you very much, Mara. I really appreciate that. Maybe one day soon, I don't want to do in the near future, so I don't want to do not, but best in, do, in working on a new segment called Ceviche with the delegates past and present. You, you have a shrimp or um, lobster ceviche before, though? Ceviche? Of course. Yeah, I, I do. I love ceviche. Maybe one day soon, we could do that together. We, I don't want to we'll do that together one of the days, but I don't want to wait till when this pandemic come to an end, you know? Because I have to wait till when this vaccine come someday soon. Yes, yes, most definitely. There's a lot of plans pending after this pandemic for us. Yeah, because 2021, I really want to go back with those physical stage performance because I know it's been a while since I haven't done so, but end up going virtual. But what do you think about the 10th of September virtual concert that I did on live TV? It's it's a very good initiative from your part, you know, to, to put out um, and some entertainment for the people out there. It was very, we really need that right now because um, we need to try to keep up with them, with the same traditions that we have also. And I was very happy to see the virtual um, ceremonies that were done for the tents and also the ones that, for example, the um, students rally, the virtual rally that the Ministry of Education did. These are things that um, are teaching us that we need to keep up and we need to try to find a way to um, go through with still like trying to keep some sort of normality throughout the pandemic so we don't forget what the real life is all about because Hopefully, and um, if God permits, sooner than later, we will get back to, to normal. And we want to still keep that. We want to not forget. And I appreciate everyone that's doing virtual um, activities to keep up and to keep the public entertained as well, because we need that for our mental health. That's correct. But not to worry. I will make my plans to come back to Las Flores again in 2021. And anything happens... We will plan together our, our shrimp and lobster ceviche together. Myra, I just want to say thank you for coming to uh, Belizean Beauty Queens past and present. It was a pleasure having you on our program. Maybe one day soon, we'll have you back again someday in the near future. Most definitely. Thank you very much for having me. Anytime. Tell the family and tell the mom and dad and relatives I say hello and you take care of yourself. You too. Goodbye. Goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Myra Cibrian, Queen of the Bay 2020-2021, as well as Miss Las Flores 2019-2020, sharing her story on what it feels like to be Queen of the Bay as well as Miss Las Flores. When we come back, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go into our third and final guest, and then... We're going to wrap up the show of this program. Please and beauty queens past and present with Alan the Reed McCoy. We'll be right back after these messages. Ladies and 
back. We have now reached the third and final segment here on Millie's and Beauty Queen's past and present. This is Alan McCoy here coming to you from the Real McCoy Entertainment Studio in the heart of Belize City. On our, on our last segment, we interviewed Myra Sibrian, who was the National Queen of the Bay 2020-2021, as well as Miss Las Flores 2019-2021, and Belma Pan Queen of the Bay 2020-21, which was a good one, and she really enjoyed it, and it was a pleasure to have on our program. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have my third guest with me that will be reaching me through Facebook Messenger phone call and she came and she hails all the way from La Isla Bonita San Pedro. I am talking about Michelle Nunes and she is right beside me. Michelle, how are you doing? Hi, I'm doing very good. Thank you for having me this evening. It's definitely a pleasure, Michelle. Tell me about yourself and what profession or work are you doing or what kind of, are, are you enrolling in any school or something at the moment? Um, yes, so I'm not working at the moment. I am enrolled in uh, at University of Belize. I am, I am at this moment pursuing my bachelor's in social work. And I, I as well, well, before the coronavirus, I was um, on my weekends, I do the SHINE program. That's very, very interesting of you, Michelle. But... I know I've seen, I have seen, I have heard about you before because um, your sister Savannah and my, and along with your mom, along with my mom, are not but church friends. Yes. Yes. Uh, hope, hope we'll meet up face to face someday soon. All right then, Michelle. <laughs> the first time when you, the first time when you hear about Miss San Pedro, um, what was your reaction about the pageant before you decide? to take part in and participate in the um, Miss San Pedro pageant? Well, I participated in 2014 and I always wanted to participate in this pageant but it was always something that was keeping me back and well, I was 21 at the time and I was like, this is my last chance and I had to like either take it or just let it go and this was a dream of mine so I, um, went ahead and signed up to participate and the funny thing about this is my mom disagreed and my mom is a past beauty queen herself and I was very surprised that she didn't want me to enter Miss San Pedro pageant so I kind of did it behind her back and then eventually she she was like my number one fan. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, your mom was a beauty queen before yeah, she participated in uh, Miss Doreen's. I don't, I'm not sure what year it was, but she was first runner-up. Well, maybe one day soon I will want to have an interview with her and, have, and, and she will love to accept that offer. But how does it feel to be with San Pedro from 2014 to 2015? Could you give us your expression of what it feels like to be with San Pedro for, from 2014? Well, that pageant was a life changer for me. Um, it opened the door. It opened doors, many doors for me. I, it was a memory I'll never forget. It was a lot of work. I mean, you not only attend like the town council requirements and this and that, but like you're a role model instantly. Actually, before you, before you win, you're a role model. So that was a new thing for me. However, I loved and enjoyed every moment of my reign and it made me want to do more pageants, which I did. I did two more after that. Uh, which two more which two more pageants you did aside from the Miss San Pedro? Which one was that? So in 2016 I did Miss America Latina and that was in Mexico and uh, in 2017, I did the last one, which, which was Miss Costa Maya. Yes. Speaking about La Reina de la Costa Maya, can you tell me what was your reaction when you got the crown, when you were chosen to become Miss Costa Maya, which was back in 2017? What was your reaction to that? I cried. I cried on stage. It, it was very emotional because uh, 
the Costa Maya Festival is in San Pedro, and it's a festival I've attended since I was a little girl. Every year I would go to this pageant, so this is like a thing for San Pedrano, San Pedranos and San Pedranos and uh, locals here to attend. So I always imagined being on that stage as a little girl. So me winning was was on a was on a experience I guess everything was shown through my tears because I was crying ah uh, I so, could yeah. yeah I could see that Michelle but I have been a supporter of you from from day one when you when I saw I think I did saw you at uh, Mrs. Terry more but yes I was there I was a guest Yes, I, w I was there too, just to support to see who the winner is, but I get to end up taking pictures with other queens, but um, I couldn't get a picture with you and couldn't meet you face to face at that time. Oh yeah, I don't recall. Like, I, 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 don't, I didn't know you that time then. So... You should have just come bothered me and take a picture. <laughs> don't worry, Michelle. One of those days when I make plans to come visit San Pedro, we'll meet up face to face and we'll do get pictures with you, Savannah, and the entire Nunes family. Which will be a good thing. Mm -hmm. You're more than welcome. Anytime. So, uh, what challenges were you facing before those two pageants you took part in in Costa Maya? And I'm talking about um, Costa Maya and Pedro. What challenges did you face when you took part in those two pageants? Well, uh, I had many challenges. I was well in nerves. You get, you're very nervous. I had problems with my speaking, but that's all because of your nerves takes control of your body. Um, I was also, like finance too is a big, big worry, especially Miss Costa Maya pageant, it was an international pageant. I had to find sponsors, I had to write letters, and all of that was scary, and then that was challenging. So both financial problems, uh, nerves, the little things as like, what am I going to wear? How am I going to get the perfect dress, the outfits? Uh, practicing every night. I used to go to bed late. I was practicing with Mr. M, Enrique de Leon and Victor. All of those were challenges. But I mean, when you want something, it's just not a ch that of a challenge. It's just more like you're driven to do it. So it comes, you're, you're wanting surpasses the challenge if you understand what I'm saying. That's uh, good. Uh, that's yeah. a good thing to do. Yeah. But I know Enrique too, but I, I haven't met him as yet, but maybe one day soon, I, like yeah. I said, when I go visit San Pedro, I will have the opportunity to meet him face to face. Yeah, he was uh, amazing. I wouldn't, wouldn't know what I would do without him and Victor. Yeah. Did you ever tour around the country and attend numerous projects? Before you give up your crown as Miss Costa Maya back in 2018? Um, I did. Miss San Pedro 2014 was a lot more busier for me. Like, I attended so many events. And Miss Costa Maya 20, when, in 2017, it wasn't as busy. I did fly to Miss Stereo Amor Pageant. I did go to that. I went to uh, Queen of the Bay Pageant in Corazal. I did, I did a couple of things, but it wasn't as much active as Stephanie did. Uh, speaking about Corazal, Queen of the Bay, um, I did a physical performance over there last year, 2019, and the Queen of the Bay Corazal Committee was very surprised and pleased with my performance that I did to the crowd, and they were very, very pleased with my performance I did for the delegates as well. After I serenaded for them, I had to call all six of them before I had to walk the stage off and they were very, very happy about it. <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that was a good experience for me too. Uh, I was a judge for that pageant. I'm not, not sure, I think it was 2017 I was a judge. Oh, that's a nice. But um, what advice would you like to give to the people as well as the aspiring ladies who want to become a not but Miss San Pedro as well as Miss Costa Maya? Well, it's it's a lot of work, and people are probably like worried about what people would think or 
I'm scared to lose, and this and that. You, you always have a reason why not to do it. But I mean, at the end of the day, what do you want? So if you want to do it, you go for it, because that's, this is an experience of a lifetime. You are already a winner, and if you want that crown, you really have to just be honest with yourself. And the moment you walk on stage, just be you, the way you walk, the way you smile. Do look, look in the mirror, be yourself, and be on stage and just be yourself. Like, if you pretend you're someone that you're not on stage, then that's not the way to win. If you want to win, you have to just give it your all and be you on that stage. Be honest with yourself, um, smile, and just have fun. At the end of the day, have fun. I mean, I will never forget my pageant days, and I, the memories, meeting new people, meeting new faces, all of that is a part of the winning experience. So, yeah, many girls say be yourself. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of uh, people will say be yourself, but I mean, as cliche as it sounds, that's the key to a, to a successful title is you be yourself. And when you win, you be yourself. You continue holding up that crown in your head. You have a job. And... You have to take that year and give it your all because you are a role model. I mean, little girls are looking at you and they want to be you. So you have to be yourself and be positive and just be, your, be yourself. Yeah. No problem, Michelle. That's uh, good advice that you want to give. But who you want to big up on the program? Uh, my family. Um, I know my mom. She watches you. She's very supportive of you, Savannah, of course. Um, all the girls who are into pageants, I would love to pick them up too. This is very important to them. And um, I just want to leave by saying that once you say yes to be doing pageants, you're already halfway there. All you have to do is go for it. Thank you very much. Maybe one day soon, Michelle, what I, want, what I want to do in the near future, if I make plans to come visit San Pedro, I don't want to, I don't want to do nothing but best in having what you call um, ceviche at the delegates because that's a yeah. new segment I want to work on very soon. You love eat ceviche, for example, a shrimp, lobster, conch, anything? I eat everything. My favorite is octopus. <laughs> Octopus ceviche, that's a good thing. <laughs> well, one of those days, we'll have to do nothing but a combination mix so that everybody can enjoy. Yes, that would be nice. With some nice, cool beer, probably a pelican, lunch <laughs> shop. Yes, yes, when this COVID is settled. Yes, I really want this COVID come to an end because I'm tired of being locked up in home alone and doing anything at all because of because you know physical performance me to get may get suspended once again due to this pandemic. Mm-hmm. Maybe one. Enjoy virtual. Yeah, but virtual performances. I've done that already. I did it for Mother's Day. I did it for Father's Day. I did it for 10th of September. But everybody really enjoyed it. Yes. Well, Michelle. Um, I want to say thank you for being on Belize and Beauty Queen's past and present. It was a pleasure being with you, being interviewing you. And tell your mom and company I say hello. Maybe I'll come over to the island and I'll meet you guys very soon. All right. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Anytime, Michelle. Do you take all care right. of yourself. Tell the family hello and may God bless them all. All right. Bye. Goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Michelle Nunes, who was Miss Costamaya 2017-2018, and last but not least, 2014-2015 Miss San Pedro, sharing her stories on what it means like to be in those positions. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say to you that it was a super show that everybody will enjoy. 
on behalf of the Reed McCoy Entertainment and on behalf of Belize and Beauty Queens past and present, I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you loyal viewers for enjoying this wonderful program that all of you will love to enjoy. This is Alan McCoy here. want to thank you for your, your support and loyalty and we're looking forward to seeing you on our next program which you will all enjoy. Thank you very much. Tell your families hello and may God bless all. May God bless everyone and bless you. Take care and goodbye.